Hi, I'm excited to talk to you today very quickly about my new SFI IRC pathway project and also a little bit on what's the point of studying medieval Irish history anyway. So this is a four year project which I started in September in the Department of Early Irish. The team is myself as PI, my PhD student Thiago Silva and Dr Elizabeth Boyle as project mentor. Now, power and patronage in medieval Ireland, Clonard from the 6th to 12th centuries, represents an attempt to subject a major medieval Irish politico-ecclesiastical site to systematic study in an international context. The project is set shedding new light on the religious landscape of pre-modern Ireland and the ways in which it was shaped by the interests of aristocratic elites as much as by and in tandem with ecclesiastics. Now this speaks to wider questions of identity in Ireland. Community identity, dynastic affiliations, religious identity and the performance of gender, which interacted in complex and shifting ways across the period. Clonard is the ideal case study for such a project on account of its history of royal patronage, its strategic geopolitical position and its male and female communities. The chronological parameters of the study range from the earliest so-called historical evidence uh, for a church in Clonard up until the diocesan seat was moved to Trim in 1202. Um, and I'll be deploying all the historical, linguistic, archaeological, literary and legal sources relating to Clonard for the period. Now, while most of the innovative work will be done on the earlier centuries, such as on the development of the cult of St. Finian, this broad chronological range allows for the inclusion of Scandinavian and, and Anglo-Norman Norman settlers who add further complexity to questions of ecclesiastical versus political identity in the period. Gender offers an additional often overlooked dimension to our understanding of the Irish church and politics. And again, Clonard provides the ideal subject because St. Mary's House of Augustinian Canonesses was founded and patronised by the local aristocratic Emwell Shochlin and led by the most powerful and influential women of that family. Now this gendered history of Clonard comprises a topic for my doctoral student and he will add to the cutting edge research on royal and religious women that's kind of emerging now as part of a concerted scholarly attempt to correct an androcentric understanding of the past. So just a little example of some of the work I've been doing so far is interrogating the historicity of St. Finian of Clonard himself. While Clonard was reputedly founded by Finian in the early 6th century, marked by this dubious annal of it in 549, a distinct identity for Finian and Clonard and for Clonard as this famous centre for learning, it doesn't in emerge for, until centuries later. And in the medieval, medieval Irish sources, there was extreme confusion about the identity of loads of St. Finians that are named. And this has not become clearer with time, unsurprisingly. Um, I found no reliable evidence for a distinct cult of Finian until the late 8th and 9th centuries. Um, when we see the cult of Finian um, being specifically developed in direct response, I am arguing, to an abrupt and significant change in patronage caused by crucial political developments in the late 8th century. Now, I was drawn to this period of study, study of early Irish history in general, because I was shocked at how few people know anything about it or work on this period. This, you know, Ireland's self-styled golden age, which we as a country promote globally uh, to tourists and businesses and diplomats as the defining epoch in our heritage and culture. You know, this is the time of uh, the famed Isle of Saints of Scholars, of Patrick, of Bridget, of Glendalough, of Skellig Michael, of the Book of Kells, the Rock of Cashel. Uh, where Vikings uh, settled and kings claimed Tara and where the legendary literary characters Cúchulain and Queen Maeve waged war. From the 5th to the 12th centuries, radical social, social changes occurred in Ireland, which have ramifications to this present day. The completion of the process of Christianisation, the articulation of an island-wide national identity, the encoding of gender norms within a patriarchal legal framework, the establishment of an ecclesiastical system with the cooperation of powerful aristocratic elites. And my study of medieval Clonard, a significant institution of strategic, political and religious importance, will allow for an articulation of these new paradigms of power and identity in medieval Ireland. The project also has the potential impact of helping Ireland as a nation reevaluate its identity and its past. 
This is particularly urgent now, given the critical juncture, juncture we're at in relation to Europe, Northern Ireland and the British Isles. At the core of my study is an exploration of the true nature of power and identity in medieval Ireland. Meaningful scholarly research in this area has been stifled by these persistent notions of so-called ritual kingship in Ireland, whatever that means, mythical sovereignty goddesses and this so-called unique uh, Celtic identity. This perpetuates false stereotypes of a homogenous ethnic national identity, which excludes now many of the so-called new Irish. By fully understanding our own colonial, aristocratic and multicultural history, we can affect a perceptible shift in behaviours and attitudes towards our empirical neighbours and our multicultural diverse society, because it was ever thus. And therefore, we can negotiate our future constructively. Thank you.